You're sanely, sanely. <laughs> You're still here? Are you not tired? You okay? Yes. You're gonna have a break soon, right? Mm -hmm. So I just came and have a look at you before you go. You guys have a break now, eh? You may take from one o'clock, right? No. Two? Two? Yeah. Somebody say one, that's cheating. <laughs> two until four, oh, that's two hours. No, no, we have two till five. Two until five. Two to five? Yes. Mm, okay. So two hours already? Mm, all right. All right. Huh? We've got 45 minutes. 45 more minutes. <laughs> cool. Mm, uh, I was going to meditate with you for a while, but then you're clapping and open eyes. <laughs> Man, why are you always clapping like I'm a movie star or something? Huh? Okay, let you know I'm here. That's it. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. I go do some work, okay? <laughs> wow, bananas! <laughs> oh, I like bananas. <laughs> the rest are yours. <laughs> See you soon. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> if I'm not here, nobody comes here, right? <laughs> then you have more room, right? Each one can have a bed in here even, no? So it's all my fault, is it? it? Huh? Oh. So, come here in the front here, honey. Front. Here, come, come. Front. The ladies go to the front. Here. Yeah. Never mind. Let them sit anywhere. Oh, uh, the banana can go up here. <laughs> it's not that elegant, but it's all right. But I can have more room. Okay, there you are. More blessings. Everybody looks at it and bless it. Yeah, more here. Just sit here. Sit right here. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about the flowers. Push the flowers. Push this back. Push it back. 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 This. Anybody who has a lot of time who can drive me around. You. Oh, you know, you know around this area? No. <laughs> yeah. GPS, you can, right? Yeah. No, we don't even have GPS. Anybody have a car with GPS? I have, but they're not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can borrow a GPS. Yeah. Okay. You have a lot of time? Yeah. Oh. I will pay for the petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. Okay. Um, oh well, that's fine. Just you? Anyone else? No choice? Brother Which brother? Who works with me? Uh, okay, let, let me have some options. <laughs> now I'm spoiled with choice. <laughs> Competition. We can have like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know. <laughs> Name? Address? Age? Occupation? How long have you been meditating? <laughs> How many times a day? How many hours? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? On free Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday and Sunday. Th Thursday, Friday. Thursday and Friday. Oh, it's all right, love. You need a rest. You need a rest. You only free two days, and you need a rest. Yes. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> That's a little bit better than you. <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I am not at you in case. Thursday and Friday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh wow. <laughs> You didn't say that? Sad and sun. And Thursday and sun. Oh, okay. Wow, a lot of choices. Your husband has a good job? He's a good driver. He'll take us around. He's free. <laughs> what do you mean he's free? He only works two days a week. Where is he? Well, he's not initiated. Oh, don't forget him. <laughs> but all these people would kill him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Tell him I thank him. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Uh, who else? Who was so many hands? No, really, you must have time, huh? Not like you, you quit your job and now I'm free. <laughs> 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 I know some of you do that. Yes? <laughs> okay. I can do Wednesdays. Not much, but Not too much, but thanks. Wednesday, we have already two people here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, are you also? I've got no car though, Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, 
that's an option. I have cars. Sometimes I need more drivers than cars. Yes, love? Do you mean just this local area or have to go far away? Around here and yeah, in the vicinity, you know, like the New Heaven, <laughs> Old Heaven. <laughs> no, with the GPS, you can go anywhere, really. Just uh, buy a small GPS and it will tell you, go turn left, turn right, 200 meters, stop. There you are. <laughs> or a map, you know? With a mouth. Yeah. Ask. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> Yeah, you can always pull over and ask the police, you know? <laughs> All right, good, my God. Okay, but you have to tell me. Okay, what are you doing? Why do you have so much time? Uh, I'm housewife. Mm -hmm. We help to my husband uh, with paperwork, freelance. Good, good. Your husband is initiated? He's not, but he's very supportive in what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Supportive husband. <laughs> 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 Information coming. <laughs> okay, supportive husband, okay? Good. And not initiated. I say sub, no. <laughs> that means supportive but not initiated. Okay, the next one. And what does your husband do, may I ask? If not, you can say sub, no. He's a, like, he's a consultant for risk financing. Okay, you okay with finances? Okay? Yeah. Because I only pay petrol, I don't pay for insurance and food, you know, car breakdown or ambulance, nothing like that. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. Um, actually, I have many cars, it's just they're not here. <laughs> well, it's, I can bring them here, but they're not English cars, like driving on the other side, you know. Well, I have also two English cars, well, not as good. Smaller, you know, not as posh. The other one's a Mercedes, it's finer, bigger, <laughs> and more safe. <laughs> but it's okay. That can be, that can be done. Okay, I don't like driving too much. I get nervous because I don't like being pushed around on the highway. You know, sometimes they drive so next to you like this, and he knows the rule. He shouldn't do that. But some people do that. Even some of my drivers, they do that. I always have to scold them. You must leave a distance. In case of emergency, you have enough time to stop without jeopardizing everyone else on the highway. You know, on the highways, it's, you don't have time, huh? must always leave a distance. Even if you're in a hurry, a few seconds don't help anybody. A few seconds, more or less, you know, <laughs> won't take you anywhere. Yeah? And the English say, better late alive than dead on time. Eh? <laughs> Mostly you always, oh, she's dead on time, you know. <laughs> she's, uh, how's that, dead punctual. <laughs> but we don't want to be dead on time. Okay, late alive, yeah? So are you the, the dead on time or the late alive? I don't know which one. Late alive or dead on time? Late alive is good, okay. Okay, but sometimes if it's, if it's, uh, I needed to drive fast, you can, huh? All of you. Are you good at that? I mean, you can drive fast without getting nervous. Fast but safe, you know? Not not like uh, sticking behind somebody else's butt, but just when it's free, you can drive fast and... Yeah? Okay. You too? You have good experience. How many years? <laughs> How many years driving? Kit? Okay, then it's more free. How many years? Kind of, kind of. Uh, more than 11 years. Okay, good. And drive a lot or just? Just only local areas. Uh -huh. Okay, highway? Highway, yes. <coughs> okay. I'm not very really good at the, no sense of directions. Really. <laughs> 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 okay, I understand. Okay, okay. Good, good. No sense of direction. <laughs> <laughs> just what I need. <laughs> Eleven years driving around in the, I <laughs> know, oh like a, a crawly square, huh? Okay, good. See, keep asking. You okay? Yeah. You have a sense of direction or not? Yeah. Cool. I okay. can find myself somewhere if I've been there like two or three years beforehand. Yeah, uh -huh. it's pretty good. Like if you go to a strange place, you be able to figure out quickly. Two years later, yeah. Two years later. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know why. I'm not very good at much else, but that. Why well, have to wait two years later? <laughs> because I used to travel around the country a lot, and. Um, why have to wait two years to to figure out? No, because sometimes I would go back to the place like one, two, three years later, and and the the person with me said, "How do you how do you know?" Uh, and you still remember, right? Oh, I thought you waited two years to recognize. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, cool, cool. So you have a good sense of orientation. How about you? How many years driving and? <laughs> 25 roundabout. Okay, 25 in the roundabout. <laughs> Good sense of direction? Yes, okay, I find my way around. Okay, okay. It just, just some people just have a talent of driving, you know, or maybe, maybe uh, practice also makes a good driver. Yeah, of course, yeah. But some people are just natural, yeah? Yeah. It's not great, I've got to say, it's not great. Okay, good enough. To get. Okay, okay, we can try, you know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll try which one. <laughs> we'll see. You good? Yes. How long have you been driving? 30, 30 years. Oh. <laughs> you are free, really? Yes. How? Supportive partner. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> you are like him, just... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but the other way around. <laughs> exactly, Master. She's, what? She's here. Where is she? She's not driving well? No, uh, she drives, but uh, she's passed her test. She drives she very well. <laughs> okay. What I mean is, if you are not home, what is she going to do? She's okay. She, she can drive? She doesn't need... To. You don't need him? No, oh. <laughs> she, she, what doesn't, she doesn't need me at all. She doesn't? <laughs> Supportive, but, but doesn't need... But I'm there anyway. Sounds like a very good yeah. woman. <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> Huh? Sorry, say again. You're not working anymore, love? Yes, I'm working. Uh, so, then how are you going to be free? I do. Uh, we so you work together? Yes. Like a company or something? Yes, master. Freelance? Okay. Yeah. So if she, you're not there, she takes care. If exactly. she's not there, you take care. Exactly. Okay, and you can communicate by phone. Sure. Uh, help each yeah. other? Okay, yeah. I understand. We do. What kind of job may I ask first? Uh, we're in. Uh, 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 she runs uh, hairdressing, beauty, leisure. Oh, you are a hairdresser? Yeah, she is. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, I need you. And I, <laughs> I, My hair color is showing. I, I do the uh, administrative side and the maintenance. I understand, paper. I understand. So, but you have other hairdressers with you, or are you alone? Uh? No, we've got a uh, salon. Are you at a salon? Okay, okay, that's In good. And you, you're okay without him? Eh? I mean, I won't take him for the whole day. I, 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 I'm not a hairdresser, Master. I understand, so. no, she... <laughs> no, I just need some color. Mm. I can do it myself. Or she's, maybe if you have time, you help she's me. She's very good. Yeah, she's well, I can do it myself, mostly, I guess. Mm. I'm just lazy to go to the salon, make an appointment and all that. And if I travel around, sometimes it's so difficult, so, so mostly I do it myself. <laughs> it's quicker, yeah? Save money. <laughs> what, love? I'll come and help you. Yeah, okay, okay. I just um, want to ask you a few things, you know, or maybe you come and do it for me. Or I go to your shop, whatever. We'll see. Your shop is nearby here, love? Or in London? No, it's in London. Ah, in London, of course. Never mind, then uh, may maybe not. I don't know, we'll see. If I cannot buy the color, then you just buy it for me, that's all. <laughs> hmm. But some sometimes I can't do it myself. It depends on what you know. It just the color is easy. Master, we can we can send someone out to you. Yeah. To do it for you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but you need your equipment, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll tell you what later. Okay. And see if you can or not. If not, just send me the color. I do it myself. We we've uh, been in business uh, twenty years together. Oh, okay, that's cool. So it looks like you are also a little um. How you say, uh, independent, huh? I yes. mean, free. Yes. Free anytime. <laughs> Supportive partner. No. Yes. <laughs> day, day and night. <laughs> day and night. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Who else was there? Okay. I guess I asked again later, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no sense of direction is difficult because <laughs> that will make two of us and then we both get lost. Because <laughs> I don't drive, you see, I don't drive often and I don't have a sense of. Okay. Maybe, okay, let's check it out again. Who else is there? Anyone else? I forgot. Are you, huh? You are Wednesday, Thursday, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, that's a lot of choices already. Monday, Tuesday, not, huh? Okay. What are you doing? Postwoman. Housewife? Uh, postwoman. A postwoman. And how do you have time then? Um, I'm moving house and I've got two weeks off. I'm moving on Wednesday. Oh, okay, two weeks. No, no, no. Okay, maybe fine. Two weeks off only, right? Two weeks off. But you have to move your house. On Wednesday, yes. So, and me and my sister's got time. 
as long as you read the map and I do the driving. Yeah, I uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> have two drivers. Wow, we got somewhere. <laughs> we will get to somewhere. Uh, an extra bonus is a sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the sister doing? Um, ticket desk agent. Ticket agent? Yeah. Like, like at the airport. Airplane? Yes. Ah, wow, that's another air bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Ticket agent, my God. Don't we know a lot of people? <laughs> uh, so you have two weeks off, and she also has this week off? Yes. Ah, just these two weeks. Okay, but if everybody else is dead, then I call you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, do you need any... Help in moving house? No. no. We have I have many drivers here. <laughs> Convenient, no? Yeah, you don't. Fine, master. You okay? Yeah, okay. Is that a big house you move into around here? Small house. Near near here? Uh, yes. Oh, why do you move? Where from? Um, bigger house to a smaller house. Oh, why is that? Uh, More convenient. Y yes. Yeah. Okay. Easier to clean. Huh? Not much to pay. Yeah, mm -hmm. more time to meditate. More money in the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you do? How much time do you have? Yeah, you can talk loud. Don't need uh, Michael. Yeah. Yes, what? master. I I work for myself. So uh -huh. I, what kind? May I ask? I, I'm project manager for what is that? Project management. Project management. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, I have time for you anytime, master. I just say it, and I'll be there. Understand. For you. Understand. Are you very successful? Are you okay? I think. Thank your yeah. blessing, yes. Uh -huh, I'm uh -huh. very okay. How about your family? Are they going to object to anything if you run around with me all day? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Your uh, family okay? Uh, they're fine, yes. Uh, the, my wife and my two children, they, they're wonderful, yes. They, uh, they, I'm sure they'll... They initiated no or not? No. Not initiated, no. But they're supportive? Uh, they're supportive, Okay, yeah. supportive and no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool, well, I'm glad for you at least. If they're not uh, initiated, at least they're supportive, and that's a wonderful blessing for them. You know, you have harmony. So it's yeah. easier for you to breathe in the house, because if one of the two partners is not coordinated, oh, that's terrible, it feels suffocating, right? And you feel so <laughs> powerless sometimes, huh? don't, don't know what to do, and don't want to do anything, you feel hopeless, and oh, this is terrible. So I don't wish any of that for you. I wish all of you have a good partner, at least. Don't don't need an initiate, but a good partner, you know, because they can make hell. Right. So one of the brothers, you know, I told him to go home anyway, because I don't want him to suffer anymore. <laughs> Anytime he says that he comes to see me, his wife throws his things out and threatens to divorce. I say, okay, then give her the divorce. <laughs> so easy. But I don't know, you know, it depends on his karma, if he likes you more or not, you know. Some people like suffering, you know. They call it muscle kiss. <laughs> yeah. But if you have the same problem month after month, year after year, then I get bored, you know what I mean? <laughs> you do what you want, man. You don't need to see me, but don't bring the garbage here and throw it on me any time you see me. Especially at Christmas and New Year, I don't need this kind of present. And you know, when everybody else is happy, you should be happy with them or forget your problem or just don't come. You always hear the same problem, you know, you feel like, what kind of man is that, is that a noodle? Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, or like half-baked bread, it was so soft and don't know what to do, what? Looks so big and, you know, mature, do something, yeah? Or just stay away from us and don't bring the problem here, right? It's a very small problem. I told you already, if a car bothers me, I sell the car. <laughs> <laughs> if a husband bothers me, I sell the husband. I mean, it doesn't have to be immediate, but we can make a plan. <laughs> Husband project. <you> know? <laughs> Write out what's the, what's the, you know, advantage and disadvantage of staying with him, you know, or her. And how much does she want you, you know? I mean, it's not so much about you want her or him, but also he or she wants you how much, you know? You have to balance. Otherwise, life is hell, you know? And you, you lose energy to do anything else. Waste time, waste energy, and oh, it's really painful.
And I don't know what is more painful, to go away or to stay in that hell. Some people love hell. What can we do? I told you already. Huh? So I said, okay, okay. <laughs> Take your hell with you. <laughs> We're here to be happy, right? It's a new year and I sit there with a face so long like a horse. <laughs> the horse in that farm, face not that long. <laughs> I mean, if I want to see a horse, I go to that farm, right? <laughs> if I sit here looking at a horse. <laughs> All right. I know it's not dif- it's not easy, huh? It's difficult. Emotional things are difficult, especially when it's like uh, karma, you know. Yeah, I told you already. You can recognize enemies or friends. It's very easy. One thing is, uh, you guys also, okay? If you love me very much, then you know that we have been together before as friends or disciples or relatives. You know, a good relationship. And if you really don't like me that much, then you know you have been my enemy before. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you are my enemy, but you don't even know that. Because you're born this life to love me. You have to, <laughs> to redeem yourself. Yeah? Not that I force you, but you just force yourself. That's what you're born for. You know, you want to come back to love me. <laughs> so just bear with it. Yeah? If, if your life is, you know, if your path is not so smooth or if sometimes I scold you or if, you know, things are, uh, you know, many things you want to love me, but it's difficult and all that, then you should know. It was a karmic relationship before, and you vow to come back this time just to love me, so that you can erase your past wrongdoing. Understand? Not that I care. I wish that you don't have to come back here, <laughs> the enemies, you know? <laughs> but some among you are my enemies. I'm sorry to say that. I don't want to tell you who is who. You know, I just know who is who. <laughs> so all of you can change, yeah? Any enemies, friends, all can change. Some of you are friends before, yeah? So we're good, yeah? Some had been even lovers, yeah? Some had even been relatives. Some had been best friends or good friends or bad friends or enemies. Been disciples before, you know, good disciples, bad disciples, all kind of people came back this lifetime to redeem yourself or to improve your spiritual practice, yeah? So that some of you don't have to go back to hell again, etc., etc. It's all for you, whatever it is, all right? Yes. So if uh, if it's a good uh, relationship together with us, then that means you've been before with me and it's been good, and now you are more improving, yeah? Because uh, this lifetime, you improve faster, yeah? Many other lifetimes, maybe you practice harder, but you didn't reap such a benefit like in this life because it's the end of the bad century. I told you it's golden age. You see? So everybody, even bad, the bad ones get up, you know, everybody gets up, 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 you know, have a lot of extra push, extra pull, extra help. So it's quicker. And you meditate this lifetime one day, it's more than you meditate another lifetime, maybe a hundred days, or even many hundred days. Understand me? Yeah. So many of you came here, rush, 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 yeah? And last minute chance. <laughs> so we all have a chance, okay? Mm. If you feel you're very good with me, just because we've had before a good energy together, you know, a good relationship. And if some are not good, and it's difficult for you to know, difficult for everybody to know who is who. Because sometimes it doesn't look like an enemy, you know? He comes back, he's a good disciple, <laughs> you know, he talks well. But that doesn't mean he was good before, you know what I mean? Just because uh, he has uh, eloquence, maybe, because he's uh, almost next to the second level, which has the eloquence gift. And that's that. And then everybody thinks, oh, that guy is good and supportive, but he's not always. You know, if you realize well, you listen well, there's always some point in there. There's something that is not positive at all, or even worse than <laughs> negative. But of course, very difficult for you to realize all that. And I am not saying who is who. Okay? It's only for me to deal with everybody, so you guys just keep quiet, don't think, don't criticize, and don't worry about anybody else's business. Do you understand me? Otherwise, I have to call names out and analyze it to you, and I don't want that. Number one is bad for that person, number two is negative for you. And then you look at that person again, and you say, oh, he's been master's enemy, we better stay away from him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to take that chance away from him or her, okay? So I just correct 
everyone accordingly. So you guys keep quiet in the mind. Even if I correct you, you keep quiet as well. Accept it, okay? Be humble and then you will progress faster. I don't want to score any of you. I don't need to. I could just keep quiet as well, but then you don't, you don't move anywhere. You stay there like a block of wood, you know? No good, no bad. <laughs> you just stay there. It's not the purpose of you coming here. So I'm not here to be nice, yeah? So that you praise me. Oh, she's so sweet, Master. The sweetest on earth. It's not my, it's not my problem, <laughs> okay? It's not my purpose to be the sweetest person for you or for anybody. Yeah? My purpose is to make you a greater person at any sacrifice. Yeah? Including mine. Yeah? So, every time I score somebody, it's not good for me. Everybody knows that. Yeah? Even you, if you score somebody, you don't feel good. You know that. The karma. <laughs> Understand? So keep quiet in here, okay? Control your mind. Yeah? Otherwise, even if I score you, correct you, and then you keep criticizing me, then it's nullified already. It wastes both of our time. Understand that? I don't care if you think I'm bad or good. It just is not good for you. Yeah, you're here to improve, and I have to fire you, polish some some of you, and that's how the wood becomes beautiful. Hmm? Okay, and useful. Anyway, it's just by the way, nothing personal. Okay, not all of you are angels, or do you think you are? <laughs> right hands, angels. <laughs> some of you are. Some of you have been with me before and were good disciples. Came back again to be higher. Yeah, it's cool. I'm thirsty. Anyone thirsty? You want some drinks? Anybody want a drink? You have drinks like yesterday? There's some in the fridge. Enough? For everyone? No? Yes. And just pass anything, like water or a small drink. Doesn't have to be the same. And juice? Okay, okay, never mind, never mind, don't worry, later. If you guys are very thirsty, just quietly go out and drink. Because not all of them are thirsty. Uh, maybe we'll drink later. So you just want to sit here all night again. <laughs> but a lot of people went out already and still a lot here. More than half have gone out, right? They had to, right? Yeah. Otherwise they would sit here until tomorrow. What about food? Food. <laughs> There's a lot of food upstairs still. Are you hungry? Yeah. Eaten again? Yeah, they just yeah. Been up quite when? Just while you were upstairs. Yeah? I didn't hear a thing. Like you mice. Hmm? Like you mice. <laughs> Sneaking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough food for another day. Yes? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Oh, and you enjoy it? Yeah. Very nice. What? Fantastic. Fantastic. Miracle diet. <laughs> My God. Really? Like what? There are well, all kinds of stories. Crunchy broccoli soup. Mm. <laughs> Parsley dressing. Oh, that is not Chinese, is it? Tidy dressing. Oh my God! You spend all day worrying about this. Ah, wow. Is it good? And if you read this, no? Yes? Is it good? Yeah, And you cooking according to this? Yeah. Well, we're not here. Why not? If it's good, then uh, introduce. Huh? It is good. Yeah. Chunky veggie soup. Only when I come here, then I eat something with you. Otherwise, I just eat from restaurant or hotel. It's not much. <laughs> they don't cook that good. Some vegetarian shops, you know, they look so good and the menu sounds very nice, but they don't even cook the rice right. It's so hard. They don't cook it right. In Vietnam, if you cook the rice like that, you never get married. <laughs> 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 That's what all the mothers say to their daughters, you know. You cook rice like that, you never get a husband. <laughs> so if you eat according to this, then you get healthy? Is that true? Well, it's, it's, it's based on your pH. pH balance. Yeah, the food majority of our food is um, acidic. Uh -huh. To this doctor, he says that 
cancer, <laughs> diabetes, AIDS is basically uh, your blood cells having too much acid. acid too much salt or too, too much acid in your body. But how do you put the acid into your blood? Through the food that we eat. What kind? Uh, orange juice, apples. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Certain fr fruits and foods, yeah. Wow. Your favorite. <laughs> you stocked up the whole basket here. <laughs> Orange and apples. <laughs> what? Dairy products are very acidic. Yeah. And okay, so we don't have meat at least. And we don't eat dairy products. Wow, then it's about time to go vegan then. Huh? <laughs> cool? I don't know. I just feel like I'm aging so fast recently, I guess. Too much stress. <laughs> I'm homeless, that's why. <laughs> no, I have a house, just don't have a home. <laughs> I've just been through too much stress recently. I don't feel very energetic. Maybe I need a miracle, eh? <laughs> just came on time. <laughs> like this, I can read every day in the hotel. <laughs> and think of what life could be if I, <laughs> if I cook all this, you know? I can't cook in the hotel. Oh, baby. You want to meditate, huh? But all this is it's good for you, no? Huh? If even tofu, pate, and all that. Do you really cook according to this? Um, Not just get an idea. An idea at least, huh? To avoid what you can, right? Uh -huh. Pumpkin pie. Wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <sighs> and all of you here are the free people, right? Who don't have to work tomorrow. Is that what it is? Huh? No, no, go what? Go <laughs> <laughs> so in the morning? Go back in the morning. Oh, okay. If you leave not too far, then it's fine, huh? One hour, two hours? Two hours? Yeah. One, yeah. Hour, one hour? Then it's not too bad. But you sit all night like this, you feel okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Used to it now. Yes? <laughs> yes. Huh? We get used to it now. Oh, okay. I can't lie down. You can't lie down anymore? Really? No, I can't, yeah. Get back at when you lay down? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Some people complain that if they sit too long, they have a backache, and this girl, she complains. <laughs> if she lies down, she gets a backache. <laughs> Wow, nobody will understand you out there, huh? If you talk like that to somebody else out there, they will think you're crazy. <laughs> you sit all night, huh? But you do have exercise, right? Go into the bathroom and come back. <laughs> Pick some food. Yeah? How many times of rest per day? Three, four times? Here, break, a break. Yeah, three, three, one, yeah. yeah, you're just like my dog people. <laughs> <laughs> they can sit all day in the house, you know? If we don't take them out, they just sit there. And if we take them out, they just run, run a little bit and come back, sit next to the door waiting. <laughs> Waking tails, you know? <laughs> so what kind of dog people are you? Yeah? <laughs> what for? I buy big gardens and so that you can have a chance to run around. They don't run around. You get used to it or something. We have to push them, play ball, chase shadow, or whatever, you know? And then get tired with, you know? <laughs> get tired, but they also don't move. And just run a little bit and then lie down on the grass <laughs> in the garden, in the big garden, waiting, <laughs> waiting to get inside, you know? It's so funny. And it's not because, it's not because they use it either, you know? Like the one dog. The Hungarian dog person, remember? Uh, they left me outside in the cold and then, and then later I took him with me for a while, you know, a few months and let him be in the house. And he loves it so much. Every time he went out, he just quickly lifted his leg and came back in. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first few months, you know, like that. Well, he just didn't want to go out there. <laughs> it's like... It's a rare opportunity to go in the house. Uh, why risk it? So he just goes quick, 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 and runs back to the door and sits there. <laughs> Everybody else is still running, but he doesn't. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just sometimes you feel <laughs> so bad about the situation. Some people say they love animals and people. And maybe some of you think that's also love because that dog person was chained before, you know, day and night. And once they went there, bought the farm, 
and the freedom that thought that was already fantastic you know <laughs> freedom and have a little roof on top oh my god <laughs> that's not it is it yeah i'm designing some dog people houses with the sunroof you know with the sun because most of the dog people houses they still uh, need some touch up you know yeah most dog people houses well, like this, you know that, right? Yeah. And have a back here, and the front is all empty. And sometimes it's too small. When it's windy, the rain will blow in, or the snow comes inside. I guess better than nothing, but when the wind, you know, the freezing wind blows through, it's terrible. So I make, like, more terraces with the um, unbreakable glass, like plastic. But, you know, good plastic. So when it's raining, he still can sit out there and look in the rain. <laughs> At night, he sleeps here, the rain doesn't come in. He has uh, ventilation in summer, closed in winter. And the door is not directly in front, but on the side. Yeah, and can flop. <laughs> Something like that, okay? But still, technically, they're still improving a little bit, because some, sometimes it's without ventilation, I don't like it. Some dog people, houses have two stories, one upstairs, one downstairs, <laughs> a condo. <laughs> but all have a terrace, at least, so that the rain cannot go to where they stay. Inside here, dark, you know, outside here is like a sun terrace, yeah? So if it's raining, they still can stay in here and look out. Even strong rain doesn't fall right into where they're lying. They can have choice. Outside is a wood deck, wood, so if it's too hot in their bed, you know, dog person bed, they can go out and crawl on the wood for a while, on the wood floor in the terrace without uh, having to go into the rain or the snow or the wet grass at night. Because according to my dog people, I know, they have their beds and they feel warm, comfortable in there. But sometimes in the night, they feel too hot. The heat builds up, you know, <laughs> with the bed. So they go out and like on the uh, naked floor, and sometimes with carpet. There are some sections with carpet, some without, so they can have choice. You know, it depends on how hot they feel. <laughs> or the air will go here. And then they go back to the bed again. Just like us, sometimes when we feel hot, we kick the blanket off. And if you have to put your dog person outside, then you must have this kind of house. Yeah. So that the rain doesn't come in. Because the way they treat dog people breaks my heart all the time. <sighs> because, um, I also saw many dog people, no, no, two or three of them, also kept chained all day, all night, and next to them is a heap of poo because they never pick it up. Terrible, like that. They live every day like that and fed them uh, two, three times a week, and the, the rest just give them a loaf of bread, dry and hard, and, or something like that. They live or die. I don't know how they live. I don't know how they survive. And sometimes get cut, you know. Recently, I just rescued a dog person. We just uh, took them and gave money to the owner <laughs> and took them so we could treat the wounds and all that because it's cut deep. Two, three weeks, still not healed properly. We went to the doctor and all that. Of course, now it's going to be better, of course. Yeah? The wound is getting smaller and drier, but of course it still needs to, to heal. Like, can you imagine? It's just a freezing, you know. It's not even England. It's colder inland and much colder like at least 10 degrees, 5 degrees at night, you know. And if winter is coming, about minus 20, 30, possible. And the dog person would chain like that, you know, all day, all night. Can you imagine it yourself? You know, you have to put yourself in the other person's position in order to understand other people. Otherwise, you never will. And he's so sweet and gentle. You know, he never knew me before, but when I first got there, you know, he came next to me and nudged around, you know. Oh, so nice. So I promised him I would do something. <laughs> and then so I sent somebody to talk to the owner to free him a little bit, but no, they don't do it because they're afraid the dog people will run away. Terrible. Why don't they just fence in a little bit, you know, and give them in the house? Could do that, so easy, but no. But they're not even there. They just leave the dog people there. Exposed to all elements, you know, all day, all night. Just so that they can bark a little bit so other people don't come near the house. Can you imagine? It's just a silly idea. And they think they are very kind already, you know, feed the dog people three, four times or two, three times a week. I don't know. Sometimes I go many days 
repeatedly, but I didn't see any food. And when I fed them, oh, they loved it. They ate so quickly, so much. A vegetarian sausage, you know, <laughs> you know. Love it so much. Even before I fed him, he already came and, you know, kissed me and all that. Oh, God, such a sweet dog. I don't know how people, any human has the heart to treat a dog person like that. How can you not imagine that the dog person would have feelings? Just because they are animal people, it doesn't mean they don't have any feelings or they don't feel any difference. If you treat them nicely or more warmly, they feel the difference. I don't know how people, any human has the heart to treat a dog person like that. How can you not imagine that the dog person would have feelings? Just because they are animal people, it doesn't mean they don't have any feelings or they don't feel any difference. If you treat them nicely or more warmly, they feel the difference. And now they love it inside the house, you know. <laughs> Get on with all the dog people. And very nice. And when we came back, it was too late. One dog person dies, only two, two left. Yeah. But at least better than nothing, you yeah? So we didn't waste any more time. Because I, I told somebody to do it after I left, but he didn't do it well, you know. So later I asked about what happened, and then he told me, just like that, like that, <laughs> nothing happened. So I said, okay, we take him. Even, even I'm far away, and when I think of that dog person, <laughs> I feel, you know, almost heartbroken as well, anytime. Anything in this world is like that. It hurts me a lot. I can watch TV, I can't watch, because right now, like, uh, bird flu, they took thousands of chicken or duck people. They just, just took them by the neck and threw them in the back and closed the back and threw them in the garbage. Can you imagine if it's you? Imagine it's you. They just bury them alive. Do you understand me? Just like that. Or throw them in the fire and burn them alive. Imagine it's you. <sighs> what all the world could have done is just be vegan. Then don't breed a lot of chicken people. And then let them be them. And then they wouldn't bother anyone. Oh, God, I cannot watch all this. Do you understand me? It just hurts me, and I can't sleep. Anything in this world, I look around, it just hurts me all the time. Even when I was younger, remember, I made a poem, and I don't know what to do with my heart because of that. It's when I was even younger, before big enlightenment or anything, before the Himalayas, these poems were before the Himalayas. Yeah, I really couldn't bear it. That's why when I was married, I, cu I couldn't enjoy it, you know. If I watch TV, <laughs> I feel sad for many days, many weeks. And I work in the Red Cross and nothing, happy, you know. And when I was young, I witnessed people dying and suffering and war and all that, you know. Just nothing really good in this world, you know. And anything can hurt me so easily. And sometimes even children, you know, healthy, good children, you know, they push them around in the pram with a covering in the front. And the cold air can, of course, they are warmly dressed, but the cold air can hit their face, yeah? And the debris from the street and anywhere. And because you're tall, you're walking up here, and the baby would be down there, you know? And I, I'd still, <laughs> I also feel hurt for that baby. I could have a delicate, and something can blow into their eyes, or they breathe something in their nose, and the cold air, you know, things like that. People are very inconsiderate, humans are very inconsiderate, and sometimes dog people, you know, they put them on the truck behind without any gripping, and they just run it in front under the hot June sun, you know, in some very hot weather kind of country, and the dog is just, you know, you know, uh, like slipping here and there, and they might hurt their legs from the heat from the sun, and we could not even bear it. I don't know how a lot of people do a lot of things. I don't know how humans have no feelings. So the thing is, whatever you do, consider the other party. Then it's easy to, to understand and to feel it, yeah? And even among our 
disciples. I was very surprised to see the dog people in Hungary stay outside like that. Okay, the other two dog people have more thick hair because they never cut their hair. Fine, maybe it's good. But the, the big dog is so thin, thin hair, you know. My God, I don't know how he lived all these years. Of course, then he had pain and all that, you know, and then we had to treat him. He's okay now. Okay now. And sleep in the house every day. At least at night, you know. <sighs> Maybe they're used to it, but why? Why do they have to be used to that? Would you like to be used to the hardship? Huh? It's so easy to give them a room, you know, a nicer room. And just a wind blows and, and, and rain falls, like that kind of small house. Yeah, it's too small. And the big boy didn't have anything. <laughs> just a roof on top with the, you know, not cover the whole thing, you know, just a roof like that. And the wind was blowing both sides, you know, it's horrible. How can people not understand that? So, uh, don't ask me how enlightened you are and what level of saint you are. Just watch yourself, yeah? Watch yourself, how you react with other people and how you treat other people, how you treat animal people, you know, the less fortunate. Then you know what level you are. Don't need to ask me, okay? If you are enlightened, he must be more intelligent, yeah? So the more intelligent human beings can see everything, hmm? better than before, no? When your eyes are open, you see better, no? So just watch yourself, yeah? Don't bother asking me, uh, uh, when are you reaching the fifth level, be a master, all that. <laughs> what for? Huh? What for if you treat a dog person like that? What for you go to the fifth level? Hmm? Who would want you there? Huh? <laughs> Who would want a saint who treats a dog person like that? And then someone even proud telling me, oh, oh, they love us because we free them. Free them to do what? Huh? Same condition. And every uh, two, three days, fed them with a freezing food, you know, put in a cold like that. Frozen food. Of course, the dog people ate it, but I don't know how, you know. They put a big bucket like this, and then they ate a little bit every day, but, but some of it was frozen, you know, because it was too cold. You remember, February, yeah? Hungary, like 25 degrees minus, yeah? And that's how they ate, you know? Put a big bucket to, to, to last for many days. But that's already very humane, I have to tell you. Better than the other dog people who've been chained in such a weather with no choice, yeah? Of course, it's better already, I have to say. Better than before, before they came. And then the dog people were chained, you know, day and night. Fine, but... It's not just to get better, you have to do the best, right? If you can. There's no use of rescue in something and then just put him into another different kind of hardship and neglect, you know? Is it? Huh? Oh, don't talking about all these things, it makes me feel painful again, you know? Many times I see I cannot rescue all the dog people in the world, eh? but if you see something like that, okay, something that is not right, yeah, try to correct it. Don't just ignore it, okay, just because of inconvenience. Understand? Yeah. And if you have to give the dog person to the pound, do give them some money with it, you know? If you can't take care of them, okay, here's some money, so take care of the dog people until they get a better home. Like this, the dog person at least gets better treatment, maybe. And there was one dog person, he even chased birds, people. So we had to give it to the center, there's no kill, and to give it to someone else to take care. Because he kills, you know, he's, he's born to, I mean, he's trained to be hunter or something. He's a nice dog, he just, he just likes to chase other things, you know, other living things. So we had to tell the center, if you want to give this dog or son away, no bird, no chicken, <laughs> no other, you know, smaller animal people. Maybe it's not good. So you have to find a house like that. You have to tell people, okay, where you found it. Maybe you think what kind of character he has. Otherwise, they will find out themselves also, yeah? But sometimes they make mistakes, yeah? If you know it, then you tell. If the reason you give the dog person is because of this, because of that, you have to tell the center, yeah? 
we have to give it to the no-kill center, because some center they kill when it's too overpopulated, or when nobody uh, adopts for a long time. And then I give lots of money, yeah? I told the center, treat this dog well, okay? Find a really good home. And after they say they find a good home, I went and checked. <laughs> a really good home? <laughs> yeah, it was a good home. I have a company of a dog, Brush teeth, even. Yeah. In such a country like Hungary, they don't treat dog people like that. But this, they have brush teeth every day. <laughs> Just like the way I treat my dog people. Yeah. Why well, if you have dog people? If you can't brush every day, that once every two, three days is better than nothing. And give them things to chew. Yeah. To strengthen their teeth and clean their teeth. They have things to chew for teeth. Yeah. Also. Also good. Also, that's okay. Then I give more donations. <laughs> but at first they didn't want to let us see it, you know. I wasn't there anymore, of course, but because they, they gave the dog person when I was gone. Yeah? I call back, you know, and check all that and make them go and see the dog person to see if it's a good home. They say, no, they don't let us see it, they, they don't want to. I said, well, if they want some more donations, they will. <laughs> so I told them I will give more money if they let me know that the dog people are in good condition, good house. Ah, they, okay. <laughs> they took us over there. <laughs> Brush teeth and all. <laughs> but good house, has good yard, and you know. Well, not really, it's an apartment, but they take them out often, and there's always one person at home, is what they said. Okay, cool. Get some more donations. <laughs> yeah, really. If you can take care of a dog person for any reason, because he couldn't get on well with other dog, or they chase your pet bird, or chase your cat people and make trouble, then for any reason like that, you have to give away. If you can't give away to our disciples, then give away to a, a, a good center, understand? The, the one that's non-killing center, and give a donation so that they take care. And make sure that they really give him to a good home later on. Yeah, A good home doesn't need to be a big home. Just a big heart. That's it. Sometimes a big home is not important because they like that farm, they chain all the three dog people in a big farm. Just to take care of the house, the empty house. And some people do like that. So you have to see who's good, you know. You have to tell them that it must be a good home. Yeah? A good loving home. Because dog people don't care about the big yard, really. <laughs> I thought they needed it. Everywhere I go, I try to get a big yard for my dog people. If I rent a house or borrow a house or buy a house, must have a big yard. Must. <laughs> cost me lots of money <laughs> and time to look. But now I realize they don't even care. Wherever I am, that's where I'm happy. They go out, leave their leg quick, two seconds, go back in the door, wake in tail. Let me in, let me in. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> all of them, all of the five or whatever, nine or whatever, when they get used to <laughs> We have so many dog people. I could open a dog center. <laughs> could start getting donations. <laughs> Instead of giving donations, I said, look here, <laughs> I'm also a dog center, <laughs> my God. It's not that I want, I want to, you know, go out busy and take care of dog people, because it's not really our job, yeah? But if I see it already, I cannot ignore, you know? They're not even in the center, they have a home, but it's a hell of a home. And when I met him, it was summer and it was still okay, but, and I told some person to go and take care of it, you know, buy them for me or do something, but he didn't do it. So now it's winter coming, I suddenly remember the dog people. Have you done anything? No, because, 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 I'll go do it for God's sake. And obviously one dog died, couldn't bear it, it's been too cold. Oh, so I had to act quick, 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 yeah. and then, okay. It's not like I'm a busy body who goes and tries to rescue the world, but what I have seen, I have to do it. You know, if I don't see it, of course, I, I, I don't want to know, and I don't know. But what I know, I can't ignore. Uh, you know, as I know, that I'm very busy, and I couldn't really afford any pets. Because they tie you down, you know, and you have to worry about them, responsibility, you know? Even you guys, you have two legs, you run around, you drive and everything, and I still feel responsible not to talk about these dependent beings, you know, and they're so sweet and so loyal. They're already used to a home, they can't survive outside. 
either dogs or birds, people. If they're with you already, they're used to it. And uh, they don't know how to chase things, except one of my dog people. You know, she chased bugs. <laughs> Before, because before she was a huntress, you know, before she came to my house, <laughs> I don't know how many she kills. And I asked her, why do you eat those, you know, lizards? You shouldn't eat it. I only eat the dead ones. <laughs> I said, of course, if you swallow her, she's dead. <laughs> One time I saw the tail coming out. I said, spit it out right now. <laughs> She's but reluctant, but she spit it out, and he ran away. <laughs> oh, that's a, when she first came to my house. That's happy. That's how she's so fat. Everybody thinks I feed her too much, but she feed herself outside. Anything that moves. So she gets stung, bitten, or because she chases, <laughs> chases all these bugs and chases the bees. <laughs> Her nose is swollen, eyes swollen, ear is bitten up, but still chasing. <laughs> promise, promise, but she doesn't do it. <laughs> Many times I, I punish her, you know. <laughs> you eat <laughs> meat, you can't sleep on my bed. And then outside, go somewhere else. And then she cries all night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't sleep. <laughs> so I have to let her in. And she promises she won't do again. <laughs> Never chase back again. <laughs> she, she still does it. <laughs> She tell me they are dead. I only eat dead bugs. <laughs> tell lies as well. <laughs> I caught her once with a live lizard. <laughs> she said, I only eat dead, dead ones. <laughs> First, she said, sorry, it's a habit. She couldn't help it. And later, it's just a dead ones. <laughs> and that time, I caught her with a tail away. <laughs> the tail from her mouth. A lizard, you know. That small yeah. gecko? gecko, gecko or something. I said, spit it out, and then uh, and then she spit that. it out, and that poor guy ran away, <laughs> scared to death. <laughs> oh, that night, she, you know, I quarantined her, of course, and she promised heaven and hell I won't ever do it again. <laughs> but I know she did. See, I saw her running outside and go chase. <laughs> Can you imagine a dog telling lie, yeah? <laughs> Lying to me. <laughs> she never learns a lesson. <laughs> she never learns a lesson. Gets bitten by bees because you've been chasing. <laughs> Stung, you know, with all kinds of wafts and bugs. And still doesn't learn. Still go chase. She doesn't know the difference. <laughs> Just uh, have it. Because when I adopted her, she was already three or four. Already into this jungle business <laughs> long before. I don't know. But, but she loves humans, you know, she loves kids, she loves old people especially. Whenever she sees an old man or an old woman, oh, she loves. <laughs> she tries to come near them, you know. Or if she can't, you know, from inside the house, from the windows, you wave. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, man, so friendly. Anybody is her friend. Anybody who comes to the house is to play with her and to love her. <laughs> and nothing else to do in the world. <laughs> I bring her to the hotel. She jump on everybody. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> She's so fat and heavy. <laughs> so lazy at home. But she goes to the street or the hotel. See anybody? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Point everybody, you know, go, you know, check in there. Oh. Uh, at home, she's so lazy, you know. Eats a lot, eats anything, anytime, <laughs> and a lot, and doesn't run. That's why. So my assistant sometimes has to push, you know, play with her and push her to run. She runs a few yards and then she lies. <laughs> <laughs> and we push her again. And, uh, okay, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but if she sees people, you know, oh, she jumps and she's so active and <laughs> so loving. Just eat bugs. <laughs> Just yes. this, this, you know, habit. But she, she is less now, less now than before, you know. 
Not because he's hungry, you know. Even after meals, you come out to see some moths <laughs> or some uh, insects or some crawling creatures. I say, oh, 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 comes. <laughs> we have to watch her. <laughs> Otherwise, all the bugs in the garden be gone in one day. <laughs> She'll be chasing, chasing all day. Yeah, but she won't play. She won't run for nothing. Only if there's a bugs in front of her. <laughs> So in a way, it's good, you know, <laughs> go out with the bus and then go exercise. You know? <laughs> so sometimes I, I put a bug in front of a stick, you know, <laughs> a, f- a fake bug, but <laughs> no fun. <you> know? <laughs> oh man, this girl, she doesn't know what precept means, you know. <laughs> People don't feed the dog people well, you know, and she has to get protein in a different way and then get used to it. Yeah, and some of my dog people, they didn't fit well also when I got them. They were so skinny, only bone and spare ribs, you know, all over, and they have to eat their own ice cream and to survive. So they get used to it, you know, but now don't do it after a while. You know, they have plenty of food, so do not worry anymore. But uh, happy she won't change yet, <laughs> you know, now and again, she still chases a bug. <laughs> uh, but then she remember her, uh, we say, uh, and she said, uh. <laughs> 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 and turn away, go somewhere. <laughs> you can see dog people, they talk, you can see dog people, character, sometimes it's so funny. <laughs> Somebody chases her, uh, I say, uh, you promise? <laughs> See <laughs> the way she looks, <laughs> just like human. <laughs> she talks with her eyes, you know. <laughs> when since she's embarrassed, you can see <laughs> her eyes will cast down, you know. <laughs> and when she's happy, oh, <laughs> yeah, she talks with her eyes all the time. And. Uh, when you talk, she understands, of course, but she talks back with her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, very lively, yeah? All the dog people do that, especially her eyes, and the communicating, uh, how you say, instrument. Mm, all of them have different, different traits, but <laughs> we can talk forever. Okay. Uh, so, I just mean that if you cannot take care of your dog person, then you have to make sure that he goes to a good home, okay? Because sometimes circumstances are right, you cannot, yeah? I do not blame you, but just try to, you know, not just abandon him or just throw him anywhere or in any center, because some centers, they kill. Uh, if you abandon them, they might die. Or some bad people get them and sell them to laboratories, yeah? And subject them to all kinds of suffering. Some laboratory testing use animal people. Make sure your dog or your animal people or your pets don't ever have to go under that uh, suffering. Understand me, huh? You must promise me, okay? What? Can I tell you um, a story about how cruel people can be to animals? And there was this uh, man who's from America and he made like use the, the cat, living cat as an accessory. Uh, when the cat's newly born and he... um, When a cat? Yeah, when a cat's like newly born, he injects some kind of medicines and make the bones softer mm. and he put in the jar like in a hot form or oh, in terrible. any form oh, and then make it like as an accessory for people to buy and then you know to feed the cat with the small um, thing you know to put and the cat had to like be in the jar like that you know mm-hmm. alive I it's so cruel when yeah. i read it i was like and um, they let it and the government doesn't do anything um the the, uh, the organization peta um mm-hmm. tried to stop the, the man but he made it the, the website to advertise it, and there there were people like buy that as an accessory and just like but really they don't heartbroken even stop his uh, website um the, the peta tried to um try to do that Everyone stop him and the uh, website um i after the, i read it i didn't um follow what you know what oh, happening to that we'll do something i'm sure yeah we'll i believe so they yeah will, they will stop it yeah they will scan the website forever and look for him. Yeah. No, no, but they won't allow it. Yeah, the they send. Um, yeah, yeah, they send around the email, and those who receive that email just sign the name. And when the email name needs come up to five hundred, then we send to, I believe, where they check all the websites mm-hmm. to to ban that website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They must have done it already. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they won't let it. Oh, such sicko.
Jesus, come up with such a thing. As an accessory. Oh, I understand. There's a live, live decor. Yeah. Oh, horrible. Yeah, but this is similar to how people treat you with calves. That's how they get view. They get a young ox or baby cow, and then they deprive them of movement and light and all that. That's how they become soft or meat and all that. And people even eat that. Knowing that and eat that. Oh, I'm telling you. I told you. <laughs> I don't know how I still can live in this world with all the sufferings I always have to, to, to witness and bear, you know. It's not just the karma of the world, it's everything I see. They are horrible things. And many things even get the worm and things to eat the fish people. Can you imagine yourself being stuck with a hook in your throat? Huh? Alive. Can you imagine that? Or you are the worm or the thing that they stick, stick the hook in to feed the... Many people have pets. <laughs> oh, I love pets. What do they feed the pets with? Live mice, people. Or live crickets. Or live fish, people. It depends on what kind of pet they have. And even hedgehog, people. They feed them with live worms. I didn't know that until I visited one farm in Germany. Yeah, they sell them. They, they breed them and they sell them. And you can buy a live worm there, you know, wiggling white, white worms and feed it to the, the hedgehog, believe it or not. Some people do that, you know, and in the pet shop they sell live crickets, live mice. I thought they're for pet, because some people <laughs> keep crickets, you know, for sometimes for fun or something, I don't know. Some people have small animals, spiders, whatever. But I didn't know, and then they tell me, it's just for feeding, because they took out the whole handful and put it in the back and give it to the guy. I said, why does he have so many pets? Crickets. I said, no, it's for feeding. Feeding some kind of, I don't know, snakes, birds, or other hamsters, or whatever, I don't know what, it depends. But they don't need all that. The animals, people, they don't need this, really. Yeah, you know nowadays already that People don't believe cats cannot eat uh, vegetarian, but they do. They survive well. And dogs are all my dog people. <laughs> you know already, so strong. <laughs> and they are just vegetarian, except happy, you know. <laughs> One percent non-vegetarian because of the bugs. But she's already getting better. She doesn't chase that much anymore. Sometimes she just chase, chase, but she doesn't eat. I make sure she has so much food that she doesn't even want to look at bugs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes people look at her, even the doctor says she has to be on diet. I say, you bet. <laughs> you bet I would like it. <laughs> because they all fat the same, but only she is fat. The other one, well, well built, you know, but not like her. When she walks, the whole body <laughs> swings around under the chin, you know, under the stomach, <laughs> swinging. <laughs> Before, she, when I... Met her, she was very skinny, you know, and had cheekbones. Now uh, it's like a ball, <laughs> <laughs> hanging, hanging everywhere like a chape, you know. <laughs> oh, she she's very loving, and she she's a sensual person. That's why she loves all this food and anything, you know. She loves anything that I eat, beer, and <laughs> of course I don't give her beer every day, but she loves it. Like to the last drop and looking for more with her begging eyes, you know, <laughs> liquid eyes. And then sometimes I can't bear, I have to give more. And sometimes she gets fat also because of the beer. You know, people with beer belly, you oh. <laughs> can see it on dogs. <laughs> non alcoholic beer, of course. None of all the dogs like it, just her. And the small dog person loves TV, <laughs> television. <laughs> He's a TV guy. And she's a buck, buck, buck lady, <laughs> a beer lady. Yeah. And she's so sensual. She loves to be petted and pampered all day long. And if nobody has time to pet her or not enough, she goes out pet herself. <laughs> you know how? She goes under any bush with leaves, and she goes. <laughs> yeah. She loves herself. We carry under the bush like this. <laughs> yeah. Long time, sometimes half an hour. <laughs> really, if you don't believe, I tell somebody videotape and you look at it. Uh, anywhere she can pet herself. If any bus hangs around, lower like this, that's it, that's her friend. <laughs>
she go and run her head, you know, her nose, her face, right under the bush, you know, let the, let the leaves carry in her face. And she go back very slow, you know. <laughs> she go back and forth, back and forth, under, under the bush, you know, very slow, very gentle. <laughs> and then she turn around, go back, <laughs> and turn around, go back. <laughs> My God, slow motion. <laughs> she enjoys it so much. So independent. <laughs> yeah. I bet that dog person can survive outside. Eat bugs, pet yourself, whatever. <laughs> I guess she had to be neglected or something, so she had to take care of herself, so she developed all these skills. Uh, other dogs, people don't do anything like that. Okay, she's the one f to chase the bugs, you know, and loves to pet herself. And the, the black Rottweiler chases shadows. You have a flashlight, which cash on the floor, that's it. You are his friend. <laughs> He'll come and bring toys to exchange for, for playtime, you know? Every time if I sit down, something, he brings some toys, you know, and work in his tail, give it to you, so that you give him some shadow in, in, <laughs> in return. Yeah. Uh, sometimes... I don't have a flashlight all the time. When there's sun or some light, you know, I put my hand like this, and then he chases it. <laughs> you can do it all day, he's never tired. <laughs> so he's strong, muscling, you know. <laughs> and they're all like they're lazy, you know. And the other one, the Australian Shepherd, the blue eyes, oh, you can never pet him enough. Yeah, time is all you need with him. And food, and food. <laughs> he eats anything, anything at all. And they love cheese, pizza, of course, spaghetti, <laughs> all the fattening food. <laughs> but we don't give them every day like that, of course, we cook for them, eh? And uh, now and again we give some dog food, but not just dry dog food like that. We still cook soup or something, or beans on toast, like beans on toast and cheese, mixed with it. Otherwise they don't eat the dry food. Sorry, we don't know what that is. <laughs> if you give them dry dog food, put it there. They all hang around, <laughs> lay there in front of the ball and look at us. What do you think we are? <laughs> are we going to eat that? We are dogs or something? <laughs> so, you know, they, they get so spoiled. So uh, sometimes when I'm away too long, and they make me feel restless, you know, I keep asking, like, Mom, Mom, when are you coming home? You know, or when are we together with you? So now, I, because we were talking about big yard, big house, or big home, that doesn't mean good home, yeah? The good home is where you love your dogs, where the dog people are loved and they feel it. They don't mind what situation. They don't really mind what food. It's just my dogs are spoiled and they know that. But if we don't have any good food like that, they would eat anything. Yeah, sometimes my assistant says, oh, the dogs don't want to eat this, don't want to eat that. And I take it in my hand and give them, mm, <laughs> they eat it so quickly and want some more. You know, it's the same food. It's just on the hand. It's different. You know, <laughs> yeah, they feel, they feel, they feel loved. You know, oh, something. Ah, oh, these dog people. But if you happen to be poorer, you know, and live in a small environment and have different food, they would also love it. They don't care to go next door to get better food. Never. They would stick with you. Yeah, that's why they, my dog people. They don't care. You know. As long as I'm in the house, they go scratching, coming back in. <laughs> if I'm outside, they stay outside forever. They don't care. They hang around, they jump around, playing with each other, happy, happy. As soon as I walk in the house, that's it. No more. <laughs> Everybody goes scratching, awake in tail at the door, waiting. So they don't care about a big yard or anything at all. Really, they don't. For what I know, huh? they just need you. They just want your love. And they want you as a leader, you know, of, of the flock. Oh, even one dog is <laughs> a leader. <laughs> you are the, how you say, the the pack, pack leader, and they, they love that. They just love to be with their leader, you know, their love, and they feel it. They know their love. If you love them, they do anything for you, really. I love first, before, I thought we have to train dogs and all that. <sighs> the first dog person, the educated one, Benny, so small. <laughs> Oh, he went to school, you know. <laughs> He's the only educated one. <laughs> Later, <laughs> we don't want to part with him. So I, I uh, adopted some more dog people. And then uh, Benny taught them anyway. <laughs> but then I was not sure. Because when they first came, I was not sure how much they understood. 
I was new in the dog business. So I had to invite a teacher to come to my house and teach them. I still so slow. And they pretended they didn't understand anything. It's just lay there. Tell him to, tell him to sit and then lie down. <laughs> tell him to walk. I just stand there. <laughs> you know? Tell him to sit. So simple. Don't sit. Just hang in there looking at you. <laughs> looking at the teacher. <laughs> the challenge, you know? And sometimes it feels so hard and harsh on them, so I say, well, never mind, forget it. I don't need them to be good or drop dead or roll over or play cowboy, nothing. I don't care. I don't care. Just leave my dogs alone. Because sometimes I saw it one time, this is why I stopped. The, 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 the trainer put the leash on my dog person and, and told him to walk. He didn't walk, so he dragged him. So they dragged him, you know, the head bang on the floor. Oh, that's it. That's enough for me. That's it. I kick all the teachers out. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. I pay already the full cost for the dogs. But I don't care. I say, never mind, never mind. Don't worry. My dogs are better than mine. It's okay. <laughs> and then I don't care, but they learn anything. You know? I don't tell them to sit ever, but they just sit. And remember the dog person in Hungary. When I first met her, she never sat. Remember, I told her to sit. I learned Hungarian, told her to sit. And she to walk away. But after I took her with me, every time she comes to me, she sits and looks at me. Just sits by herself. And she loves me so much, she chased all the dogs away. <laughs> when I first came to France for a while, you know, in a big farm, and she just loved me so much. I don't know why she changed. And I don't particularly just treat her well alone, but she suddenly turned and she just loved me so much. Every time she comes in front of me, she just sits because she knows that's the thing I wanted her to do in the beginning, and I did. She didn't, and so she just sits like that. And every time if she knows she wants something or she sees me, she just sits, you know, just to show that yes, I I do it, you know, <laughs> because I love you. Yeah, don't need language. She doesn't need to talk to me. Oh, she's so lovely, so lovely, so sweet, so sweet. But with other dog people, no, she's the boss. <laughs> She keeps chasing Hamid, the, the blue eyes. He's very hyper, always wants petting, always wants to hang around. And, oh, he's never quiet. If you stop your hand, he goes, <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you have to keep petting forever until your hand almost falls off. <laughs> so, you know, that girl, you know, the Hungarian lady, she knows it. <laughs> so from then on, she took it as a duty. She trains him. Oh, everywhere he goes now. She goes, you know, naked on top of him. You know, she's taller than him. <laughs> and that boy is a very strong, you know, uh, very bad boy. He's not easy to be tame, but she's tame him. <laughs> and if he begins to get high, but she comes, <laughs> puts her head on top of his neck, and that's it. Wherever he goes, she just follows like a, <laughs> like a twin, you know. She won't let him go, ever. <laughs> My God, I feel sorry for him. <laughs> I couldn't even separate him. When she's on her teaching spree, that's it. <laughs> only, only her student matters. She doesn't train anyone in the house except that guy. <laughs> because she knows he bugs everybody too much, you know. And me, you know, all the time, nobody can ever get close. If I sit, that's it. Only him, you know. He sh spun across the whole <laughs> sofa on top of my legs and hyper forever. <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking at my more, more, please. <laughs> or, or throwing balls, you know. <laughs> Keep throwing and throwing, and he brings back the ball and puts it on my lap or in my hand. So slimy, <laughs> full of drools, and, and and you have to play with it because he ne necks you if you don't, you know. Like I, I said, no, I don't want to play. And then he puts his head under my arm. <laughs> You push it up like that and put it on the ball. <laughs> so slammy. <laughs> Terrible. So she knows that I don't really like it too much. So she took it on herself, you know, took a man into her hands and trained him. She trains him, the only one. She doesn't care about other dogs. She doesn't mind. Normally she doesn't care. <laughs> she really trains that guy. Normally he's very aggressive. Nobody can, you know, like no other dogs can... He he's okay with the other dog people, but he doesn't listen, you know. <laughs> but she he has to now because she never relents, <laughs> and if he doesn't listen, she buys his ear. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> she never buys anyone else. 
not dogs, not animals, none. <laughs> Never even bother anybody. All she loves is just to sleep next to me. That's it. She doesn't care about anything else. <laughs> but she buys it here, and since then he listened. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I say, my God, what has become of you, Hamid? You really lost everything. <laughs> he's so scared of her that now if he see her coming around, even if he's next to me, he run away to a corner, you know, and she makes sure he stays there. If she doesn't put her neck on top of his, she just stands next to him, <laughs> you know. And wherever he goes, she just, you know, like that, <laughs> like a twin, you know. Don't let him go anywhere. Yeah, and after a while, he comes out, then she goes. <laughs> and uh, because one time she had some uh, problem, uh, some something, that she needs to wear this thing. <laughs> Even with that, <laughs> the big bell on her neck, she goes and chases him. <laughs> I put that on top of his head. <laughs> she goes, sometimes the, the bell, you know, goes right into his head, <laughs> and she pushes him around like this. <laughs> you know the bell? They put it around here like a bell. And then she just next to his head, and then just get stuck in there and go away. Oh my God! Oh my dogs! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any of your dog people are like that. Yeah, <laughs> but my dog people are so funny. And you know the poodle, huh? The <laughs> the <laughs> ten thousand dollars poodle, <laughs> many thousand dollars poodle. Whenever he's on, he's, he's on my lap, that's it, he's dead. You can't even move him. <laughs> Get up, go eat. <laughs> he doesn't care about anything, that guy. They, they all have different characters. So I don't know how anybody doesn't love dogs or treat the dog people like that. I don't know why. I mean, you don't have to treat them like the way I do, but at least give them shelter, you know, good food every day and clean water. Not like a given once every two, three days like that is horrible. Even you yourself you don't eat every one or two, three days unless you're a poor, no? Terrible. I can't bear it. They're so lovely, you know? What I mean is, if you love them, they listen to you. You don't even need to train them so much. Yeah? If you still dog backwards. What, love? Yeah. Still, oh God. <laughs> That's the closest thing to giving yeah. unconditional love. Yeah. They are okay. Talking about them, I meet them. <laughs> you have no people on you? Yeah. No? You don't have? If you want, just go and adopt them, okay? If you don't, then it's okay. Yeah. But if you see some dog person in trouble, you gotta help. You can buy it and give it to the good home. They don't sell it expensive, you know? You can buy it from them, from the terrible owner, and then Give it to the shelter. Huh? Don't give a lot of money, otherwise they will think it's a good business. They will go get another dog person. And then you come over and buy another one. You have to bargain with them. Say, well, it's an old dog person and you don't use so much. Oh, you know, it's a pity and then that. And then buy, give some money. Most people are glad to give. So if they treat the dog person like that, it means they don't really care about the dog person. So they're happy to give it to you. Maybe free or for some money. Yeah. Just pay as much as you can, say, that's all I can. Just help them, huh? Because I cannot talk. You see some dog people hanging outside in the yard forever, in rain, shy, snow, anything. My God, imagine it's you. Mm-hmm. And they're so helpless, you know? Mm-hmm. So dependent, they couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't tell anyone. Can you imagine that? <sighs> Lucky England doesn't seem too bad. I'm going to say this. Some of Europe and New Zealand is not good. Yeah, that okay. I'm not sure. Even any good country still have somewhere, you know, they do that. I'm not saying that any country treats their people badly, but some are terrible. In China and all that, oh, it's terrible, terrible. You know, we're so backward, this planet, yeah? And even though we elevate people up to a certain level, it's the souls that go, their habits are still bad, you understand? That's why there's still a lot of, you know, conflicts around the world, eh? Okay, okay, we don't talk about that anymore. I'm just telling you anything on this planet is 
very painful for me to watch. It's not easy to live here. Not just because you have problems and conflicts with other people, but all the things you see, what people are doing to each other and to the animal. People, it's horrible. It's, sometimes you see some films with violence and cruelty like that. Some real life is like that too. Sometimes even worse. You know, sometimes it's even worse. If you want to be happy, you have to be blind, deaf and dumb on this planet. You know? <laughs> Anything could hurt you, right? If you have feelings, it is horrible to live here, no? And if you turn on the TV, there's all kinds of violence and cruelty and misery, huh? It's terrible to watch it. You can't even watch it. And every time I turn it on, I say something. But at least sometimes it's okay, you know, Red Cross or animal people, so I have a chance to give them money. <laughs> I gave the Red Cross some money last time. I gave it from somewhere else, from Spain, not here even. And just through credit card, you know, just name and credit card. But they found out my address. That today they sent me a letter, thank you, two months later. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they could do that. Yeah. I well, sent a letter, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't want to have all this, you know. So I say, so. It's easy because I'm not even in England. So I thought they would never, you know, bother. But here, send a letter. Yeah, thank you so much for your kind gift of 10,000 pounds. That was for the English Red Cross. Yeah. Because yesterday I sent uh, 5,000 pounds for the dog people. And, uh, not dog people, but animal people. Uh, the one SP, yeah, yeah, because they advertise it on the on the television. So I call them. For me, it's quicker. But I didn't want address and form and all that. So I said, "Oh, you have to give an address, otherwise we can't do it." I said, "Well, you take five thousand pounds now, or you don't." <laughs> and then I said, "Okay, okay, <laughs> give us your number." And at that time, I was confident that. It was what I wanted because of no address. But today I just received a letter from the Red Cross, so I'm not sure how confident I can be, because I also didn't give it. Yeah. I even told them, I said, I just want to be anonymous and help. They said, well, you can send like one power a week or something. I said, no, I want to have it one now, I'm some, so you can do something with it, because uh, I have many dog people already. I have many pets I can't have anymore. But I hope that you guys can do something that I cannot, you know, the way you advertise it, you know, then you can do it for me. So it's quicker if you have a bigger sum of money. And they wanted an address and all that. I said, no, I just want it anonymous and quick, okay? The main point is you have animal people, not for me to get anything. No thank you letter, nothing. So, you know, it's okay, they got it. Because they f originally also didn't want it. They say, not possible, we need to have an address and all that. So, but last time I gave it to the Red Cross, I didn't ask for the address or anything. They said, oh, really? Okay, let me talk. And Okay, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I say, you can have 5,000 pounds right now, it's quicker through the thing, you know, because they wanted me to send a check, it takes a long time, you know, foreign checks take a long time, one week, two weeks sometimes. So I say, you take it now, 5,000 pounds or not? And they say, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that would be anonymous one time only, you know? Instead of one pound a month, if you send 5,000, it's for five years. <laughs> but now that I got this letter, <laughs> I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter, it's okay. They just say thank you. No big deal, yeah? They still want some more money. <laughs> <laughs> one pound a month or two pound a month, something like that. That we could do. It's no big deal. I did that before even, you know? So it's not really that safe, is it? <laughs> Nowadays, huh? Nowadays, it's not private anymore. My God, all my anonymity. Because <laughs> most of the time, I don't, I don't, I don't give with an address, you know. I just write a check, you know, and tell him. It depends on how much. Yeah, or sometimes wire money, you know. But that involves more work and address and everything. It depends. Write a check, wire, or just credit card. Yeah, yeah. 
I can't believe they found out my address two months later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you letter, yes. And at one time in another country, you know, I sent some chocolates to the children. I also didn't leave my name or anything, but it was from the hotel, you know. So the hotel called them, called, called the chocolate company, like packed, you know, for the children. And then I sent it without, I went and paid cash, so there was no name, nothing. But somehow they found out my address, the Red Cross in another country. <laughs> and they sent me also a thank you letter. <laughs> yeah, my God, <laughs> nowadays I, <laughs> I can't hide. I can run, I can't hide. <laughs> Whoa, I'm telling you. <laughs> 